Hey everyone, in this video today, we're gonna to take a look at something that I've been curious about for a long time, and that is film scanning using a digital camera setup. I'm gonna share my thoughts on kind of how good and capable a system like this actually is. So in the past, I've had a lot of people reach out asking me about camera scanning. Uh, it just never really made much sense for me to go and invest in an entire setup for video, just because uh, if you watch this channel, you'll know I have the CoolScan 9000, which I've been very happy with, uh, but it is something that's always intrigued me. And you know, when it comes to film scanning, if you shoot multi-format 35 and 120, uh, in my opinion, there really isn't a great option for both uh, until you get to something like a CoolScan, problem is obviously they're really expensive. Uh, there is the Epson flatbeds, uh, which a lot of people use, but personally, uh, I've always found them pretty good for like six, seven and larger formats, but I've never been happy with the results from 35. So my goal with this video today is to share the results that I got using like a pretty standard and affordable setup. Obviously this is a Holga. I'm shooting this video with my X-T4. I'll show you that setup after, uh, but also going to show you uh, images that were scanned on the CoolScan and an Epson as well. So we can look at all three. Just using the CoolScan as like a benchmark. Uh, I know it's a really expensive scanner. I'm not trying to see if this can kind of stack up, but it is nice to have those like high quality files uh, to put them up against as like a reference. Uh, but as always, gonna share my thoughts, but uh, let you come to your own conclusions. Everyone has different needs and preferences and things like that. Okay, so we'll start quickly by just going over the setup. Uh, so recently the folks over at Veloy, they offered to basically set me up with a kit so I was able to do this. Uh, so like I said, I have an X-T4. Uh, they sent over their advancer unit, a bunch of their accessories copy stand a light. The lens that I'm using is a 60 mil f2.8 by a company called Seven Artisans. This isn't obviously the best lens in the world. Uh, from what I understand though, it is like pretty well regarded in this like digital scanning community uh, for the price. So Veloy recommended this as like an affordable option. We figured it's best to use something like this just to show what kind of results you can get uh, rather than using like a really high end expensive lens. But you know, obviously there is a lot of flexibility when it comes to a setup like this. So, you know, the more you spend on your camera, the better the lens you buy, the better uh, results you're going to see. When it comes to scanning with the digital camera, again, you can go like as simple or as complicated as you want. So you could basically uh, tape your negatives to a light source and shoot them that way. It might not be the best results, but what Veloy does is they offer like a number of different accessories. So you can go with something uh, as simple as just their film holder. So this is the 120 version right here. They sent one for 35 as well. So you could just buy something like this. Uh, they come with little rubber feet you can stick on to put it on top of your uh, light panel. And then at least it gives you something that's gonna hold your film nice and flat. And you could just kind of advance it manually. Uh, for me, they sent over their full kit, and this is really nice because it gives you like a complete like streamlined setup. So this is their uh, advancer unit on top, and then there's a diffusion panel in between, and then a light source holder on the bottom. And basically what this allows you to do is, uh, all the film I have is cut just from how I scanned in the past, but you would have your uncut roll, you put it in and then you just use the advancer to go frame by frame. So again, gives you this like nice solid setup that you can leave uh, kind of all put together uh, and it's ready to go whenever you need it. So if you do already own a digital camera, you could put together a kit for pretty cheap, you know, just going with something like the film holder, get some sort of light source, go with the vintage lens or something like the Seven Artisans and you're gonna be good to go. And as you'll see, get pretty uh, decent results, even with a camera like the X-T4, which obviously is, is a good camera and isn't the cheapest out there, but it's not like a $4,000 full frame or $5,000 medium format digital. Uh, anyways though, let's uh, jump on the computer and we'll take a look at some of the images. Okay, image examples, let's get into it. So uh, like I said, Epson 4990, CoolScan 9000, camera scanning setup. This isn't like a shootout or anything like that. It's purely just for reference. And these were all converted using Negative Lab Pro, copy and paste the settings other than the color settings. I just let it do it automatically. So what we're seeing is kind of what the conversion software would give you uh, right out of the gate. Color is subjective. You would obviously go and tweak these from there, um, but figured it's best uh, for comparison just to leave them all kind of the same and then on automatic for color. Okay, so this first one is the camera scan, this is 645 film. And we're gonna look at the cool scan against this one, but this is giving us like a 5,200 pixel wide image. And 
you know, at, with camera scanning and using a, a camera like this with a three by two sensor, as the film format starts to get larger and the aspect ratio changes, you actually have to start obviously cropping and you lose resolution. So it's kind of like working backwards and the 35 millimeter frames are actually the ones that were most impressive because you could use the full sensor and you'll see that after. So you'd have to uh, stitch if you wanted files bigger than this, but this is still a, a very good image file size. So this is no sharpening applied and you know, Overall, it looks pretty good. I'll throw the Nikon up on the left so you can see for comparison. Obviously, this is a very contrasty scene. The Nikon looks a lot more saturated. Um, they usually do, for some reason, these files out of Negative Lab Pro, uh, but the colors still look great on the camera scan, you know, a little more natural, if anything. Uh, and then detail-wise, obviously, the cool scan full resolution is giving us a way bigger file size, like 8,300 pixels wide, uh, and you can actually see the film grain because it's resolving uh, so much detail. Whereas if we go into 100% on the camera scan, it looks like a little smoother, not as detailed. Um, but the one thing I have found is they sharpen up very nice. So if I click on sharpening, this is just like a very rough, uh, quick sharpen I did in Lightroom. But you can see that you start to see a little bit of the grain and the detail actually looks, uh, it looks really nice for what it is and for this, uh, this image size. You know, with the Epsons in the past, I've noticed that as you start to sharpen them, it almost starts to look like a little artificial. You get to a point where it doesn't uh, look good anymore. But uh, yeah, these camera scan files look pretty good. And this is all gonna come down to personal preference. You know, in these videos before, people have said, ah, oh, film's not about sharpness and this and that. I disagree. Um, obviously, it's subjective in terms of how detailed you want your images to be, but film shouldn't be blurry. So anyways, I'm just showing you uh, like, how these look at full resolution when they're sharpened up a bit. You can do whatever you want with them. But uh, overall, the camera scan does look great. Okay, next, excuse the colors on this. This looks insane. This is just a cool scan file straight out of Negative Lab Pro. It's like neon saturated, but I wanted to leave it to show you comparison. So this is 6.7, huge file size, like 10,000 pixels. As we go to the camera scan, you see we're actually losing image size, like I said, as we have to crop more. So this is 4,800. Still, you know, a fairly big image for a lot of uses. Uh, and you'll see there is quite a difference in color just in terms of how saturated these initial results are. I mean, obviously this one looks better than that, but you would take these files and work them after. Full res, the cool scan again, you know, looks great. This has no sharpening. And then uh, with the camera scan, seeing very similar results to that last one. So like a little kind of smooth, but if we flick on sharpening and start to add some, you start to see quite a bit more detail. It looks pretty good. And you know, the, what I'm most curious about right now is like how much better could this get with a better uh, lens attached? Obviously we're using that cheaper seven artisans macro lens, which is doing a pretty good job, but um, you know, it'd be cool to see these results with like a really high-end macro lens as well. Overall though, pretty good. Um, we'll put the camera scan on the left here. We'll take a look at the Epson. So you'll see now the Epson is like the flattest of the bunch uh, when it comes to color. Uh, the colors actually look, you know, pretty good uh, just in terms of saturation, uh, it's, it's lacking. And that's something I noticed with a lot of these Epson files. Uh, and then the size isn't bad, but just want to show this in comparison. Very similar from a detail standpoint to the camera scan and sharpens up very similar as well. So 6.7 for me has never been an issue on the flatbeds. It's once the, the format gets smaller. Okay, so 6.45, again, I want to show you this scene because it's quite contrast, you know, deep shadows, really bright kind of sun on the side of this building. This is the cool scan and this is the camera scan. And the thing that's neat here is they almost look, you know, identical in terms of how they were rendered and uh, how well both did at really kind of like preserving these highlights, it's like nice smooth transition for these bright areas. We'll flick on some sharpening. And uh, they look very, very close with how these, uh, like the tones in this scene were handled, even with the shadows over here from a color standpoint. And then if we check out, so again, we'll put camera scan on the left. 
So here's the Epson, and I have found in the past, we'll see it with some exposure test images I'm gonna show you in a minute, but like bright highlights, stuff like that, I have found is where the Epson starts to struggle. You can see that um, they're just like a little more blocky. They're not as smooth compared to the camera scan. And then colors are definitely uh, more weak as well. But next we're gonna look at 35, and this is where I noticed the biggest difference, and this is really where the camera scan setup started to win me over. So uh, this is the cool scan, full resolution, 5,400 pixels on the long edge. And like I said, using the Fuji for the camera scan, you can use the full sensor with 35 millimeter film. So all of a sudden, if we go and look at this one, this is the camera scan and the image size is 5430. So it's like identical to what you're getting out of the cool scan. We'll put both side by side. So cool scan left, camera scan right. And I actually, the colors to me look nicer on this camera scan, a little more natural in the sky. But again, that's all subjective. But if we look at detail, so let's go into 100%. This is no sharpening on the cool scan. So a little softer here, but as we add sharpening to the camera scan on the right here, like it looks just as good as that Nikon version to me. Even if we go back to the Nikon version and add a little bit of sharpening, it looks amazing. And that's really where I was sold on this setup as like a multi-film format uh, solution. It looks, uh, the 35 scan looks great, it really does. And then in comparison, here is the Epson and this for me you know, the file size is quite small, 3,200 pixels, and it's just blurry, you know, obviously you can sharpen it up, but uh, the colors don't look great. And even, you know, this is bigger than 100%. Uh, it just doesn't look that nice. So like exciting to me to see that the, the camera scan setup, you know, how nice these 35 mil results were from it. Okay, and then the last one we're gonna look at is um, an exposure test. Image. So this is some Portra 800, and this negative is probably about three stops over. And I was curious to see how the camera would do for this um, because the cool scan does great. The Epson's I found once you work with like a dense negative, you get weird color cast. They don't handle highlights well and stuff like that. So here's the Nikon, and here is the camera. And you'll see that it held up very well. So Nikon on the left, camera on the right, on both of these images, uh, I'll zoom in just for fun to 200% for the camera scan one. You can see that the highlights are handled well in both. Like there's still that nice smooth transition. There's no, nothing weird going on with them, even if we go over here. So that was really neat to see. The, I'll put the camera on the left again. The Epson though, in comparison, you could see starts to take on like a weird cast and the highlights get like kind of blocky. There's not that smooth transition. Uh, they're like a little more rough, I guess is how you could explain it. Uh, just not as nice as either one of the other options. So impressive to see, you know, with 35, with overexposure, uh, even with the larger negatives having to crop a little bit, um, I feel like the camera held up very, very well. So quickly we'll talk about pros and cons. Uh, pros, the first one for sure is the speed. So that is something that really kind of hooked me. And it's also something that, you know, with the cool scan in the past, it can take like a couple of hours to scan an entire roll at full quality. It was never something that really bothered me because I was always just like figured it was a trade off for how good the results were. But I'll tell you what, using this and just, you know, being able to do like an entire roll, say it was uncut in a minute, really changed uh, my thoughts on all of that. So that's one of the biggest pros. Uh, the second is just the capabilities for multi-format. Like we saw 35 and 120, it did a great job. And then it got me thinking, you know, let's say you're using like a GFX 50 with a native 4.3 sensor and you're shooting a lot of 6.45 film. I mean, the results are only gonna get better with something like that. Obviously it's a big step up in price, but you know, flexibility is a big one. You can kind of make this as simple or as kind of expensive and complicated as you want, but even with a cheaper setup like we saw here, it's still very, uh, producing very nice images. And the last one is just multi-use. So again, you know, GFX 50, that's what I'm thinking right now in my head. And it's cool to know that, yes, it's an investment you'd have to make, but all of a sudden you have a camera here that you could detach 
and go and use to make images as well. So there's a lot of appeal in that for me. Okay, when it comes to cons, uh, a big one, it isn't one for me, but I know it is for a lot of people. And that is obviously with a system like this, all of a sudden you don't have uh, digital ice or digital dust removal. That's something that I almost never use just because I found, you know, you store your negatives properly, use a rock blower, you don't really have many issues. Uh, with a system like this though, Veloy does make uh, this, it's called their duster, and that just attaches on here and you feed the film through and apparently it removes all the dust. So I think with a combination of this and a rocket blower, you're probably gonna be pretty good to go. The second con is just like setup and experimentation and just how finicky something like this can be at the start. You know, it's not like a film scanner where you buy it, you plug it in, you put in your film, it's good to go. That's what I love about the cool scan. It's just there, it works. Uh, there is some time needed to basically experiment and get your setup uh, rock solid. And you know, for me, the first thing that I would replace absolutely is this uh, cheaper copy stand, just because I found, you know, there's some flex here in this post. And when I was trying to like nail critical focus, you get these little micro jitters and like the screen shaking. So it's a little finicky, uh, but I do think it is something that if you just give yourself the time, you invest in like the right uh, pieces of equipment, you could lock down like a permanent setup that's there that you just clip your camera into and you're good to go. And the last one, and this is obviously a big one, is if you don't own a digital camera, well, all of a sudden the dynamic of this changes a lot because the investment becomes uh, quite a bit bigger. So, uh, you know, if you look at like the multi-use thing, if you could get some use out of a digital camera, that obviously helps. But if you wouldn't really use it otherwise, then you might be better at looking at a dedicated film scanner option like a cool scan. Okay, so final thoughts to close this out. You know, for anyone out there who's looking to start scanning film at home, or if you're looking to uh, say upgrade from a, a flatbed that you aren't happy with, personally, I would go the camera scanning route, just based off of the results that we saw today. You know, the 35 was very impressive. The 120 was still pretty good. Uh, and I think the quality is gonna be more than enough uh, for what a lot of people need, especially if you aren't printing large. And then it just gives you flexibility to like upgrade as you need if you start needing you know, bigger image files and things like that. And obviously with the kit as well, you can start very cheap and you could build out like a full system uh, that's just really kind of like intuitive and straightforward to use. So overall, I'm impressed. It's given me a lot to think about personally <laughs> over the next little bit. Uh, and I hope that this helped you out. Try to keep this video somewhat uh, concise and cohesive, but it's always a challenge with ones like this. Um, I'll put a link to Veloy's products below. Check them out, great stuff. Thanks to them again for sending this stuff over so I could do this. If you have any questions, let me know below. And other than that, just wanna say uh, thank you as always for watching and I'll talk to you soon.